Greetings! Welcome to the home of Growing in the Garden, the first two lessons in grade two and four in your curriculum. We're in Iowa, it's 15 degrees out here and it's snowing. So come on in, I think it's a great day to start gardening in your classroom. Well, now we're inside nice and cozy, but I wanted to show you this picture that I prized because I'm from Iowa State University Extension and Outreach in the 4-H program. And here in Iowa, the 4-H program started in gardens, boys and girls gardens, in 1901 with um, Jesse Field Shambaugh, the teacher and the principal, that started the gardening for the kids. And so that's what we're continuing to do now with this curriculum called Growing in the Garden. Your first two lessons come from Growing in the Garden, and it starts with Plant Parts Become Me. And Sue Cook is our master teacher for all of these lessons, and she is working with Mrs. Meyer and Mrs. Bachman at Waverly School in Iowa. So let's go to Waverly and enjoy the lesson. Well, we're going to do an activity today where I'm going to turn all of you, you can put your hands up, I'm going to turn all of you into plants. Okay, so Mrs. Meyer and I are going to be, we're going to be Mother Nature's, and we're warming you up. And then we need something to make your seed wet. What other natural resource makes your seed wet? Water. Water. So we're going to rain little raindrops on your little backs. You know that your seeds have little coats on them. They're called seed coats. And they protect the baby plant that's inside. And when the seed coat gets warm and wet, it starts to split open. So now that your seed is warm and wet, I think the baby plant is starting to grow. So you probably should be wiggling your bodies. You wiggle your bottoms, probably start wiggling your toes because your toes are your roots. So our seeds need one more natural resource to grow into a plant. What are we missing? What are we missing? Um, worms. What do we need to worms. What do we need to breathe? Air. air. Everybody pop your head up because you need to get some air to breathe. And now that you have your air, you're starting to grow. And you're getting taller and taller. And your leaves are starting to unfurl. And you're going to be a flower garden. So you need to make flower heads. How about we're all flowers? You know, some people say that weeds are weeds, but some weeds are actually flowers. So we've all made our flower heads. Not your flower heads if you know the song, Head, Shoulders, Knees, and Toes. But we can't do that song anymore because we're not human beings, we're plants. So what do you now have instead of a head? Um, flowers. Flower. Okay, everybody show me your flowers. You can make your flowers however you want. You can do it like this, you can do it like this, however you want to make your flowers, because all flowers are different. Yep, however you want to make them. What do we have instead of shoulders now? Leaves. They okay, show me your leaves. It's pretty windy today. I think our leaves are probably really wiggling fast, aren't they? What do you have instead of a body? Oh, no. a, a stem. Everybody show me your stems. And what do you have instead of toes? Everybody touch your roots with your stems, with your leaves. That's a long ways down there, isn't it? So is everybody ready to do our song? Let's say the words. Flowers, leaves, stems, and Roots. Everybody ready to sing? Get your little bodies all limbered up. You ready? Okay. Ready to sing? <coughs> Flowers, leaves, stems and roots, stems and roots. Flowers, leaves, stems and roots, stems and roots. And flowers, leaves and stems and roots. Flowers, leaves, stems and roots, stems and roots. You want to do it faster? No. Yeah. Well, this story is an up and down story, and we're going to pretend like this is the level of the ground. So everything growing this way is growing <coughs> above the ground, and everything growing this way is growing below the ground, and those are roots. Um, so we're going to vote as we read this story about which part of the plant you would like to eat. So if you think the top part is the edible part, then you would vote thumbs up. Everybody show me thumbs up. If you think the bottom is the edible part, then show me thumbs down. What about stem? You're clever. Um, <laughs> so if you're looking at the carrot, which part of the carrot would you eat? Bottoms? How about a radish? Would you eat the top or the bottom? Okay. And those are roots, by the way. 
How about a beet? Do you eat the top or the bottom? Some people eat the beet leaves, but typically we eat the root, which is the, leaf, the beet. How about lettuce? Do you eat the top or the bottom? So if you're eating lettuce, you're eating leaves, just like if you ate spinach. Or in the middle. So kind of middle. Then how about, no, actually the leaf is the top of the plant. How about celery? Do we eat the top or the bottom? Oh, I see somebody doing middle. Because you know what? Celery is a double one. You could eat the leaves at the top, or you could eat the stem at the middle. And I learned that some people even say the stem is just like part of the leaf. And so we call that part of the leaf, or we'll call it a stem. So, so let's do a little test. Um, I'll point to the vegetable, and you show me with your thumb what is the edible part of that vegetable. Remember that one? Yeah, you're doing your thumb both ways because we can eat both parts of that. I candy. know. That's why I'm using both. Yep. So, no, boys and girls, think cabbage. back to the story. What did the hare know about plant parts that helped him be able to trick the bear? What did he know? Um, that he um, knew the plant, like the plants that only have like <coughs> the bear one at the top, and then he took the bottom, so he would only plant um, that edible food that are edible on the bottom. Yeah. And what could Bear have done to solve this problem? Emmy, can your whole group come up here and each one of you take a plate and give it to someone else? No, no. Yeah, we'll let you take one. Give it to someone else and then come back and keep serving other people until you finally get one for your own self. These are some things that we could grow in Iowa. You could grow broccoli. Isn't that cool? But see, you always just see broccoli as these little, they're called florets, but the little balls at the top, when they become mature, they open up into yellow flowers, and then they make seeds. So we usually eat the, for the flower that's at the top, and then you can eat the stem, but this is what it would look like growing in the garden. And then this is whole carrots. If you had them planted in a garden, this would all be growing under the ground, and this is level with the top. So this is the big root, and then this is the top. It's pretty nice. I wish I could grow carrots that big in my garden. Radish is a root. You want to go all the way down The next two lessons are also from Growing in the Garden. There are connections to two lessons. One's called Rocks to Ice Cream and one's called Keeping Soil Alive. In Rocks to Ice Cream, the kids are going to explore and discover what's the connection between rocks and ice cream. Then you'll be making ice cream. This is your Ziploc bag that you're going to be putting in the ice cream container or ingredients. And this is the uh, gallon size bag that's going to be your ice cream churn. And so that'll be fun for them. We encourage you to, that you always use rock salt rather than table salt because um, the ice cream will not freeze with table salt. In Keeping Soil Alive, we are making worm observation farms. And here is our old worm observation farms where the red wigglers have already eaten through the vegetable scraps and the newspaper scraps and turned it into soil or compost. So you'll be learning about that in your next two lessons.